Hey everyone, Covid news this week is the bureaucratic farce known as the EU has given up trying to steal vaccines from Britain and America and instead they've gone crawling to Vladimir Putin asking if he has some spare ones he can sell them. The Russian developed Sputnik V vaccine is shown to be quite effective, although I'm guessing that it's dispensed by members of the state police jabbing vaccine laced umbrellas into unsuspecting members of the public or maybe asking if they can accompany them round the back to be shot, uh, shot with a vaccine, at least that's what they say. Uh, but anyway, if Brussels wants to write a check to Moscow, then so be it. So be it, so be it. Anyway, in America, the news was the announcement that the family of murdered man George Floyd looks set to be awarded a $27 million settlement. Blimey, George Floyd looks set to be earning more than Pink Floyd, uh, showing once again that perhaps crime doesn't pay, but your grieving relatives might do quite nicely out of it nonetheless. Also this week, a story that it seems we're not going to be seeing any more of Mr. Potato Head, and I initially thought that headline was something about Piers Morgan being sacked, um, following his refusal to apologise about the comments he made about Harry and Meghan. You know, it's not often I agree 100% with Piers, but he's pretty on point with this one, and most of what they said in that interview came across as either sanctimonious garbage or just plain lies, uh, like the claim that she had her passport taken from her and was unable to travel for years, when in truth they travelled a lot during those years, and there's countless PR shots to prove it. They also claimed that someone was racist, but then refused to divulge who it was or anything beyond that, so without fact or a specific accusation, who knows what happened really. She mostly just seemed to hold a grudge based on her being unable to use that position and its public resources to pursue a career as a political activist or to cash in on the role to get filthy rich. And in my mind it's kind of like she maybe thought that Victoria Beckham and Queen Victoria were the same person and maybe just got confused because she was too lazy to research what the job actually entailed. Admittedly both Harry and Meghan both seem to be in on this jape though the two of them presumably have a lot in common though, uh, like hi I don't care about her and I don't care about him. Uh, but where next though? Well there's the Netflix show in the making and some voiceover work and you know if anyone's a betting man I'm wagering £100 she launches a perfume in the next two years and people are making comparisons to Princess Diana so if she does launch a perfume maybe she should call it Tunnel Number 5. You know what, in many respects she has a lot more in common with Prince Philip, uh, like disdain for the British press, being born overseas and a life expectancy of two to three years at most. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.